Uh, hi everyone, my name is Xin Lan. My first language is Cantonese and I came to Australia about 2002. And um, right now I'm a Japanese and linguistics major in my final year at UWA. Uh, to give you a small taste of what a Japanese major's life is like here, let me divert your eyes to the screen for a bit. So on the left there was me on the Genesis program in 2016, although it's 15 there, but that's what the, how they name it, I don't know why. Um, I was with my host family overlooking the city of Nagasaki on a Ferris wheel, and at the bottom was just us skipping across a river on a weekend morning. And on the right was me um, on the new Colombo Planet Zoo Immersion Program in 2016. At the top, we're all dressed in business garb, looking pretty smart and learning about corporate culture. And then at the bottom, which is us uh, looking at the first trade blossoms in the country during our free time. Um, and next slide, please. <laughs> And um, other programs I've been involved in was the National Japanese Language Speech Contest, where I got first prize and managed to win like, a return trip for air in Japan. So that was me just trekking up a snowy mountain. Uh, it was called Mount Togakushi in Nagano Prefecture. And it was great. And um, just to give you a brief idea about what I'll be doing after graduation, so immediately after graduation, I will become a coordinator for international um, relations on the JET program in Kyushu in Oita Prefecture, where I'll be working with the local government. So yeah, it's exciting stuff. Um, I encourage you to learn a foreign language here because it always brings you exciting people and opportunities. Uh, hope our talk today will make you more enthusiastic. Thank you. Sinan, you have been learning Japanese since you were in high school. Why did you continue to study at the Omnia team and then at university? Okay, um, let me just start very gently. As, as we were saying, um, after you pick up a second language, everything gets a lot easier. People go, oh, English is like the language of science. It's like really organized. I'm just like, mm. but once I get through, got through that, it was okay. Um, I started in um, U10 and uh, continued Japanese for one simple reason, because it was fun. And the other, the other thing is, I really enjoyed going to hot springs. I went to slow and I almost cooked myself. Um, and then, let's see, uh, I think a lot of people from our generation got into Japanese because of pop cultural elements like anime and music. Um, for myself, I, it was detective and stuff like sci-fi novels, no judgment. And as I became an adult, I thought, oh, you know, I have to earn my own bread now. Might as well do something that I, that I enjoy. So yeah, I continued through, I continued through in uni. What I'm trying to say is, like, there's nothing wrong about choosing a language because you like the lighter aspects of its culture. So yeah, why don't you give it a shot? <laughs> Great, thank you, Sinta. Sinlan, you had some exciting opportunities to spend time in Japan in your university years. Can you give a brief overview of the programs you were involved in and the skills you have gained from this time in Japan? Um, so all the events and programs that I spoke about, I knew them via UWA. The first one was the Genesis program, which is sponsored by the Japanese um, government. Uh, it focuses on the mutual cultural understanding exchange between use of Asia, um, the Asia Pacific and Japan. Um, so the whole process basically goes down like this. You go through a selection process, get sent to Tokyo, and then you group with other university students all around Australia. You spend some time in Tokyo and then spend your, the rest of your time there in our host, selected host city. Um, in our group, our group was fortunate enough to go to Nagasaki a place with a pretty unique history. Uh, first of all, because uh, it was one of the very few places that was open to foreigners during the 16th to 18th century, when Japan adopted a pretty isolationist foreign policy. And secondly, if you recall, it's one of the two cities ever to be hit by the atomic bomb. Uh, so during our time there, we learned quite a bit about the complex relationship between Japan and the West in its early days. And furthermore, we spoke with the local students from the Nagasaki University and heard about the stance on the future of nuclear usage. And um, the other program was the New Colombo Mitsui Immersion Program, that's quite a mouthful. Um, 
Uh, they were sponsored by the Australian government, Amitsu & Co, which is, a, which is a multinational journal trading company based in Japan. They in Perth as well. This one also focuses on cultural exchange, but more on the corporate side of things. So basically, we spent a lot of time going to different Japanese corporates. One of them was the um, Toyota Automobile Factory Production Line. It sounds like, mm, what? But uh, believe me, it's really cool. We weren't allowed to take any photos because Japanese people are pretty separative about these kind of things. But it's really cool. You should, you should go to this program if you can. Uh, the rest of the time we spent in Tokyo and did a lot of workshopping um, about their business models. And we had some opportunities to come up with our own business models as well. So yeah, um, during all those two, um, those two programs, I learned a lot about Japanese corporate culture and had the opportunity to communicate with like local students as well as as well as like other Australian students. So there was a big, um, there was a pretty healthy balance between like soft and hard skills. Yeah, I definitely recommend it. Thank you, Sinma. Sinma, you are about to finish your university degree and graduate. Graduate. What are your uh, future career plans and how do you think your language skills will be beneficial in your chosen career path? Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, right after graduation I'll be heading off to Japan in Oita Prefecture to work as a coordinator for international relations with the Japanese government. Uh, some of my roles will include um, translation, interpretation, promoting Australian culture to Japan and then promoting the Oita Prefecture to the world. Uh, they've updated me recently on the upcoming projects I've been working on. Um, they include the uh, Rugby World Cup in 2019, as well as the, inter as the National Cultural Festival that will be coming to Oita later on this year, so I'm very excited for them. Uh, as Japan is still quite a monolingual society, I think having a good command of Japanese, the Japanese language would definitely benefit someone who wants to work, especially in the cultural promotions department, which is something that I want to focus on when I return to Australia in the future. Yeah, uh, and uh, the other thing, the very last thing, is like other than picking up the language skills here at UWA, one of the things I've gained is like public speaking skills. Like I know it's really daunting to speak in front of like other people and express your ideas, but trust me, if you if you speak to like a whole room of people over and over again, it gets better eventually. <laughs> so yeah, so definitely be proactive when you graduate from high school and you improve and find opportunities for the Thank you, Steve.